or somewhere. <laughs> that's just like you leaving your viola all over the city. Um, that's how you get a bad that's reputation. Big town that um, you blink when you drive through <laughs> and lose the city on the way. But you get the ocean. That's the town I grew up in without the ocean. Anyway, we are live. It says we've been on live for 13 seconds. So Yay. hello, um, <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm Kat Rudero, psychic empath, psychic wrangler, and celestial medium. Welcome to Third Eye Salon, where we drop the veils of illusion in order to take a deep, fresh look at reality. Today, we are looking beyond the veils of our source creator, all the way to origin, to the origin, rather, of our source creator. And we're going to find out that there's more than one. Um, and maybe even beyond that. So we're doing this with the incredible guy, Stephen Needler. Now, before we do that, though, we're going to say hello to my bestie, Linda Coulterburge, psychic and conscious business coach. How are you, Linda? I am feeling like already with this conversation, <laughs> so I can't wait for everybody to join in. I will be your live stream chat host, and my policy is always play nice or get out because we just don't have time for anything else. But make sure you have a great conversation in the meantime. Um, please like, share, and subscribe when you come on because it helps with the algorithms, helps us grow as a community, helps um, people find us. And that's what we're all about, right? We want to help everybody find a home here so that they can go and explore the world and take that with them and be their most beautiful selves. Um, make sure also that you check the boxes below um, for contact with Kat, myself, um, and our guests. And um, also thank you so much for the coffees. We love our coffee. Um, mm -hmm. There's other ways to, to donate to help this uh, grow. And if you can't, that's fine too. Share the program. So, um, and also join our Facebook group if you haven't. And with that, I can't wait to continue this conversation. Guy, welcome. Well, thank you very much for inviting me on the show. It's uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be to be invited. It's <laughs> it's never something I take for granted. It, it's always a, a lovely surprise. So thank you very much. Mm. It's a delight to have you here. Um, we're going to get into Guy's bio here in just a minute, but before that, we cannot forget the magical bitch, psychic medium, and ET artist channeler, Jason Adkins. Now, that was for his Facebook. He posted this on Facebook, <laughs> so I feel like I can say it on, on the show. You can, um, absolutely can. Okay. As many times as you want to. <laughs> How are you, Jason? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, my lips are pretty chapped. I feel like they look super pink, um, but I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Oh. You know, we got so much so weird i don't know how to describe it like a, got this, i know that i have all this energy around me but i can't pinpoint mm. what but it is like all over like a menthol on my skin if that makes yeah. sense mm -hmm. <sighs> well i'll be curious to see how that develops throughout the show like we'll do a little check-in to see if you pick up pick up anything else while we're um commuting with the origin and beyond um so let me pull us into mr guy's bio oh also give us a thumbs up if you're excited to to meet guy and um to learn about source creator and to learn about origin um i think this is just going to be utterly mind-blowing in, in the best of ways but i'll probably have to take a nap afterwards anyway here we go we're going to learn about steve guy steven needler um, he initially trained as a mechanical engineer and quickly progressed to become a chartered electrical and electronics engineer. However, throughout this earthly training, he was always aware of the greater reality around him as he caught glimpses of the worlds of spirit. From his teens to early 20s, these glimpses drew him to read extensively the spiritual texts of the day and meditate intensively. Then he was told by his guides to focus on his earthly contribution. So he subconsciously scaled back the intensity of his spiritual work. When Guy reached his late 30s, he felt, he felt the call to return to his spiritual roles. The next six years saw him become a Reiki master and pursuing a four-year commitment to learn energy and vibrational therapy techniques from experts in the field. He studied with Helen Stott, a student director and teacher of the Barbara Brennan School of Healing Methodologies. 
His training and experience uh, in energy-based therapies has resulted in him being a fellow in the Complementary Medical Association. Um, during his training as an uh, during his training as an energy healer from 1999 to 2005, Guy discovered he was that he was able via meditation to traverse the frequencies above those associated with the auric layers. It was during these trips to the higher frequencies that he discovered he could communicate with the energetic entities that existed on the various levels of our multiverse. These entities included the Ohm, beings created from the energies of the original manifestation who pervaded the omniverse that is the origin, the creator of the God of our multiverse, the source entity, its peers, the co-creators, and the co-creator of the co-creator itself, the origin referred to the absolute. This is where it's like, whoa, like you've gone down a tunnel of light and you're like, you know, it's just, this is so otherworldly. Um, Guy quickly established a constant and robust communicative link with these entities, circumnavigating the need for deep meditation, journaling the channeled communications as he progressed. It is these channeled, uh, it is these journal channelings that resulted in the manuscript for his first book, The History of God, which was uh, quickly accepted for publication by the Ozark Public uh, Publishing, Dolores Cannon uh, Publishing, Dolores Cannon's publishing company. Um, so he's, I'm going to not read the rest of the bio because I think the least exciting thing is me reading a bio for the show, but the rest of it is down below. Uh, he's written many more books since then. He's had so many more experiences since then. So um, we are going to now um, hop in and say welcome once again, and please give us some loving thumbs up. Um, as we get into the conversation with Guy Stephen Needler. So, um, I, you know, before, when we do these shows, we always want to get to know the person from the context of who they were as a kid and how they found themselves, like, you know, relating to the world as a child. Can you just give us some background of that? Like, what was it for, you know, little Stephen growing up in the UK? <clears throat> I never really fitted in. <laughs> um, I had this feeling of wanting to fit in and be part of you know a community of individuals as we all do because you know, we, we we naturally exist in uh, in communion with those other souls that are projected from our higher selves I, i'm told to call it a, a true energetic self but dolores called it the over soul and the hindus called it the godhead um <clears throat> so we always we're always in communion and of course, we, we we are individualized from source as well. So that's another level of communion. So we always seek to be in communion. Uh, but I felt that I was always on the edge, you know, and I never really, never really gelled with any, with anybody or anything. And so as a result of that, I felt that um, I felt a bit sort of strange, a bit sort of alone, if, if you know, because in essence, I, 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 I was quite um, connected even as a, like a th three or a four year old. And I understood things. I had these <laughs> some strange thoughts, um, even at that age. And I, I, I sort of always felt that I never fitted in, basically. So it was, it was quite an interesting childhood when you know things, but you have to prove that you know them. Um, and and, that's, and that was a big thing with things like you know, maths, when you're connected to source or, or, or the, you know, the cosmic consciousness that is source, um, and, and above that is the origin you just know the answers to things but the problem is mankind in its low frequency linearity says well if you if that's the answer to that question then what's the bit in the middle and so it, I find it's very difficult to sort of go to that to be able to basically prove what I understood although the evidence was there that the that the, the the answers were right you know, being able to prove that felt very difficult because it just felt all too slow. Yeah. And the, one of the other things was, was quite interesting that uh, I I always had difficulty articulating what I knew to people, um, just just you know, even just average stuff, and that meant that I I initially developed a little bit of a we, we call it a stutter over here. It's a stammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it took me quite some time to overcome that. And one of the ways I overcame it was to speak quite quickly. <laughs> so, so that the stammer or the study didn't get didn't get chance <laughs> to take hold. So so I've 
I've had to learn to to <laughs> to speak slowly. So for mm-hmm. me, this is slow. <laughs> <laughs> it might it might not be slow to the rest of the, the listeners or the watchers, but for me this is this is slow. So it really was all born from trying to get the information out from there to people I was communicating with as fast as possible because it would disappear if I didn't. But fortunately, um, when I started to do the traversing the frequencies work which is which is how i discovered i, I could communicate with other entities mm-hmm. um i was starting to get um total recall so mm-hmm. i could i would spend a long time meditating at first <laughs> i'll probably spend half an hour go to a level spend five minutes at that level and then spend another half an hour c- coming back down again it could, because by that time i've done about an hour and five minutes or so and, and i had to get to work because that, that's how i did my meditation i just do it in the garden, standing by one of my trees in the garden. But once I understood I could go faster, it was it was much 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 better. But the the essence of getting the total recall was that I could recall everything that happened in that five minutes, which was a lot. Mm. You know, and we'd, I'd discuss it because I used to drive my my, my late wife to work <clears throat> um, because we, we shared the same car, and we would discuss what I picked up on on the journey. And uh, I was fortunate that this total recall allowed me to basically type it up in my lunch break that day at work. So if, if, if we in, in the days when we have lunch breaks, because <laughs> these days people just work through lunch, and, and, and that's basically how my life was towards the end of my work, my working life as a as an engineer. So I was able to really you know type it up and and get, remember everything, which is fortunate. And of course, all of those t- texts and pages of information ended up being the first book, The History of God. Wow. It's really intense to follow your journey through that. Um, What I pick up about you is that you're very high frequency. And so because you're so, you basically kind of plugged into the planet as a little Buddha. It's like you were just a little Buddha. You were already connected to everything. And that kind of like my analogy for that, you know what I mean? And it's like you were able to sync this higher frequency, which didn't translate. And so... Like it just it mirrors the whole speech pattern is also that reflects how high your frequency is because mm. you are so plugged in. And I feel like you've given yourself a lot of um, grounding with how you've shown up in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I just I, all right, I'm going to I'm stop yammering to Linda or uh, Mr. <laughs> Jason. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I do to- actually have a question. Um and I guess it's it's really about the difference. Like you're in the UK, and in the UK, like correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean spiritual spiritualist churches is that the correct name? Like where people are demonstrating psychic ability and mediumship, like it's pretty popular, and that's not something that we really have an abundance of here in the yeah. states. So growing up and you're having these experiences where you just know things, like I don't know, I feel like it should be easier for people to express that part of themselves when you grow mm-hmm. up in a country that has those resources available versus say here in the States where, you know, it's church, like it's the Bible, like we mm-hmm. don't have, we don't have that option to go to this place where these people are now demonstrating <clears throat> these things that are happening to us. Mm-hmm. So did that, did that help or did that have any impact at all? Not in the slightest. Um, spiritualist churches are, are, are actually quite closed. They're very click. We call it cliquey. You know, they they have their own group of individuals, and to break into one of those groups is very very difficult, because they they're they're a little. I feel that they're a bit afraid of new information that maybe yeah. that might rock their boat, so to speak. And I found it very very interesting that even down to some Buddhist centres. In, in my hometown of Birmingham, they wouldn't allow workshops there that were outside of their own sort of ethos and belief system, which I found is absolutely bizarre. You, you would have thought that they would have understood. I mean, I mean high, high frequency individuals who are open minded know that there's many roads to source, you know, and, 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 the, and, and the origin of all, the, all religions comes from a single point. It's just that mankind's got in the way over the years. And, and so, <laughs> it's 
it wasn't really a help to have these other institutions around. Mm. What, what, um, what I found was it was more helpful for me to communicate with people who are studying to be a healer, for example, um, or, or go to institutions that, for instance, the College of Psychic Studies in, in, in uh, Kensington in London, who had a long history of you know, working in, a, in, a, in an expansive and in a progressive way. But even the College of Psychic Studies has become very closed as well in terms of what they what they deal with. And I would guess that's because it's they having to work as a business. And so they, they have to work within a, a regime that people can relate to and understand. So rather than the, rather than the what I would classify as the the really deep expansive stuff, I sometimes refer to it as heavy metal metaphysics, is it's, it's just beyond them because they they wouldn't get the people in to do that. So they deal with things like tarot card reading or or you know mm. hopefully Indian candle healings and, and and these sorts of things and and, and quite quite easy channeling. Um, mediumship which is quite surprising because the history of the, of, of the college of psychic studies is is really deep and immense and there's lots of people who were you know back in the 1800s when it was uh, when it formed were experimenting and understanding and writing really meaningful texts that ended up being part of their library and so that that these people clubbed together to create this institution to do you know, psychic research so to speak but but where it is now <clears throat> you know it's 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 almost fair ground level of, of oh dear of, that's yeah. so heartbreaking to hear that so we have sorry we have the same thing in glastonbury <laughs> um glastonbury mm. is is a bit like um i forgot where we where, where it is now uh there's another place in arkansas um if i remember the name i'll 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 let you know but it's eureka uh, yeah eureka springs it's it's a very hip place and the whole the whole place of glastonbury is based upon the the ancient knowledge and the mythology associated with uh, england at that time and they and they wanted to protect it so they they become very they became very closed shop again to protect what they knew and, and, and the ethos of their, of their own spirituality. <laughs> the only problem is the rest of the world grew up around them and became more spiritual than them. So again, it's, it's, it's more of a trash and trinkets sort of place now. So mm. all of the history and the potential for spiritual modalities and understandings and knowledge that could have been within the UK, actually it's, it's not it's it's more it's more of a you know can we sell a uh, a dream catcher or or can we sell some joysticks those sorts of things which is a real shame now that doesn't mean to say there isn't some superb individuals there there are you know with, hidden within all these places there's some really good quality mediums and we shouldn't we shouldn't forget that but the but the the general population is isn't as, is where we isn't where we'd like it to be let's put it that way yeah yeah I'm just having flashbacks to midsummer murders right now actually <laughs> we got you talking about that but um like i think that there is like i want to introduce you to um mariah uh, Mar maria wheatley um she's somebody that i think there's some i know there's some people in the uk that i want to network you with but well i'll, I'll do we'll do that post I, I know maria oh you know her see she's like you know you're somebody or you two could get together and have a just brilliant conversation like i'd want to be a ear you know uh, in the room listening to that mm. Yeah, she was basically a, well, she is a um, an Ozark author with, with her with the work that she does. Yeah, okay. and she was invited over to one of the transformation conferences, probably around two thousand and twelve. Twelve was the UK one. I think she was in. She was in. She was even inv invited about two thousand thirteen as well. Yeah, she's a very competent individual. Oh, she's amazing. Do you have a question, Linda? I see you came off mute. Um, actually, I was so blown away by Jason's of uh, the conversation that's gone. I've completely forgotten mine at this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> good job, Jason. 
<laughs> um, and we have a lot of people coming in. So I want to make sure everybody knows that this is live. You can ask questions. Um, if you're new here, just put a question mark or the word question in there so we see it. But you can ask Kai questions. So make sure you participate and support each other, answer each other's questions the best you can as well. <clears throat> and there's no question that's too too silly. And there's no question that's too hard. So ask away. I love your energy. Um, okay, I want to reel this back to kind of a, a way for people to comprehend when we talk about zero point energy, when we talk about um, origin, when we talk about the the ohm verse and, and the Big Bang. Like there are all these things that are threaded together and they're also reflections of each other. And so I'm wondering if you could take us to the Big Bang in terms of what that experience was for what we are calling origin. So we've got, and just to break it down for people, there are these multiple multidimensional levels of all that is, and Guy has tracked them into, and and been able to navigate and, sort, and do all the circumference work around what that is up to the point of origin, which has created all things within, and even it doesn't know how big it is. Like it's the whole, the whole pretext is like the big mind blowing bit. So I'm wondering if you would like bring us into that. Yeah. If, or, or go where you want to go, but you, you, I think you know where I'm go going well, with this. Do, do they want to know the history of the origin and, and the creation of the, of, of our, of our creator, our source, or do you want to go a little bit beyond into the book that I'm working on right now? Let's do that. Let's do that. That's where your energy is. Let's do it. Right. <laughs> Which one? The book? The, the, the book. The, the, the second book. one. Yes. Sorry. Right. The latter. Well, <laughs> well, it's 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 stretching me as well, to be fair. Um, mm. The book is called um, Beyond the Origin, which I'm classifying as, a, as, a, as an event space odyssey. Within everything, per, with with Everything is permeated with something called event space, which is, and we exist in events, not time. Time is something that mankind has created. And it's, <laughs> and we're very clever because we're the only people to invent something that doesn't exist. So, so we exist in a, in a series of events. We have event streams within events and they link together. And we've got realities and, and all sorts of different things that come into it. And parallel conditions are created through our choices as sentient entities. And, and I'm, I'm saying entities rather than beings because we are we are we are individualized from an entity and so therefore we are entities if we, a being is a volume of sentience that has evolved basically from the um, energies sort of basically coalescing together then actively actively grouping together then deciding that the that they feel that nice about grouping together then creating rudimentary intelligence and going down the, the road to sentience until they become sentient in its own right um <clears throat> but in this 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 sort of event space that i'm going through now i'm starting to work with the origin and we're recognizing that the moment the, right at the moment it's in the first group of 12 levels of structure there's, t there's 12 groups of 12. So there's 144 levels, if you want to call it that, that's, that's, that we understood and recognized. But we're still in the first group of 12. And that's where the origin is right now. And, it's, and, it, and it's, its role is to evolve by expanding the volume of its sentience and increasing the quality of its sentience by experiencing it. It created <clears throat> 12 versions of itself to help it do this but if you didn't know what it was, how can you create something you don't know what it is? So that sort of failed, basically. So it created 12 smaller volumes of sentience and gave them a role, role to play, because with the 12 versions of itself, they hadn't got a role to play. It was trying to recreate itself in the way it was created. But mm. that So in essence, we have these 12 source entities. There's actually another one, the 13th, but um, that's that's something else that's is, is that a collective of this one it's yes yeah, it's part of it but it's 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 something that's happened as a, as a function of evolution which is uh, which is quite quite interesting um but going but back to so psychic yeah coming back coming back to um this the, the source has created 
us. There was 12 source entities that have done various different things to experience, learn and evolve on behalf of themselves and therefore the origin because they're because they're individualized units of sentience of the origin like we're individualized units of source they are essentially the origin so it's just like our cells moving around the body um and experiencing different parts of the body basically mm -hmm. that's, that's, th think of it in those terms mm -hmm. so it's <clears throat> so in effect they're trying to experience all these different things so the origin can can evolve now, when all of these different levels have been mapped out, so to speak, and experienced, and everything that can be experienced is experienced, it then goes into the next level, the next group of 12. But with this event space that permeates everything, we've been able to go beyond that, beyond these levels, these, these 12 groups of 12, into nothingness. Because what I, understood, what I found out is that the gaps in between mm. structure substructural space is actually nothingness and that nothingness is where structured space exists within so structural space in itself is limiting <laughs> so, because even though it's inf inf infinitely larger than the than the origin is is ever going to be in right now eventually it'll fit that as well and we're all we'll we're all part of that we'll become part of that uh as as a so as you're a saying we're not origin right now will become origin we are becoming origin well if you think well think of us as being the the quarks inside the origin we're, we're the quarks so mm. we're still origin but we're we're, we're we're further on down the the, the sentience hierarchy if you want to call it that we're the quirky so, quarks. Hashtag quirky quarks. Okay. We're quarks. <laughs> we're quarks, basically. So we've got the, the origin, and it's split out, it's split out 12 smaller units of itself into the source entities. And one of those is our creator, and it's created all these billions of true energy wow. cells by ourselves. Jesus. And then we've got the, the, the smaller, there's up to 12 souls can be projected from each of those, which creates us. But, it, but we can also divide our sentence into 12 and create shards which are they they can also be incarnate like us in different locations within the physical universe but they haven't got the same level of sentience clearly <laughs> so Whoa. so they they don't they're not as expansive as we can be but they but they add towards our experience our overall experience they add towards our overall evolution so there's lots so there's there's these origin source entity true energetic self aspect of trended entity itself which i call as which is the soul if we want to call it that and then the shards or a, or a sub or, or a sub soul it's and, just amazing yeah. like i just want to say like this is just to hop in because i think i want to give people a chance to i have to kind of incubate that in my brain for a moment it's what my celestials call the dream within the dream within the dream where even we can populate the world from this aspect from this vantage point with other aspects like the whole the whole fractal it's it's like this fractal reality is what how i experience and uh, speak about it and being able to you're awake in the fractal reality and so you're able to translate it all because you're awake and you're aligned to it and I, it's like, it's what I see happening with everybody, like with, within their awakening, people are waking up within this greater collective. And you really were a precursor for it. You came in already with it. And I think a lot of the star kids are having that, like the, the, the babies are coming now or coming in like you did, where they're already mm -hmm. connected and there's no disconnection. There's no point to disconnect, you know, and it's a different experience, but I, I think there's so many parallels to why your work now is so MF relevant to get out because you're giving people a map to, to to connect into the fractal reality within their awakening mm. and and you do counseling around this too with people don't you i well <clears throat> i do readings for people and i help them i help them through through the readings basically and also do healing as well and so and so the healing and the readings together can create a, 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 a counseling effect but i don't i don't specifically do counseling as such okay okay but, but i do but i do offer assistance or should i say helping understanding it's probably a better way of saying it yeah gosh that's great um linda jason so to dig into this rabbit hole a little bit more um <laughs> how how does that relate to 
our, our perceptions of past lives. Um, well, yeah, past, how does that? Past, yeah, yeah. Well, past lives are what we've experienced on Earth as different characters or different personalities in different bodies. Um, so, so are those the fragments of our? Are those the fragments you're talking about, or are those? Where does no, that those, fit into that hierarchy? Oh well, past. <clears throat> well, basically, that's just our experiences. So that so the, the the hierarchy I've just explained is is like a static structure basically, and okay. then each of those parts can experience different existences in different locations within the physical universe, different frequencies within the physical universe, and different body types. Clearly, you know, because we, we don't just incarnate in the human body; we incarnate in all sorts of different form factors that are out there. So, so what we call aliens, I just call a different body type, <laughs> basically. So, so and, and it's so it's, and it's okay. interesting to note that that what we call past lives don't we don't actually do from a linear perspective we think our past lives are in the past but we can have lives in the past in the future <laughs> if that makes any that's sense. what i was just going to say we i think for our <laughs> cognitive brains we have that linear perception of what's happening to keep us sane hmm. um but that they have there the time like for me i just say time's relative <laughs> it just doesn't it doesn't exist the same my husband always says is this linda time or is mm. this real time mm. and it's very it's very fluid i guess um yeah. how do you perceive time with that and and um, various different speeds <laughs> basically the, I mean, I think Eckhart Tolle had a fantastic description of, of, of the passage of events, and he calls us what we experience as clock time. He, he, he says it's, it's clock time, it's mechanical time. We, it's, it's, it starts there and it keeps going, and it's, and that's it. But I, I see it as being something that is, is either um, <clears throat> rapid or slow depending upon how we interact with our environment and and so if we're enjoying something it's fast if we if we if we're just if you're not enjoying something it's very slow but i i can all, i've also noticed i noticed around the age of seven that that time itself was if we're going to call it that the passage of events was, was speeding up because we were starting to come up the frequencies uh, and so you know what we classify as being a t the 24 hour day um, was actually is actually 22 hours for example those those sorts of things so although it's still 24 from from our, from our clock time perspective in reality it's 22 so could be a higher frequency so were you talking about time as being events i had to step away for a moment yeah yeah, okay. yeah we were talking about how we perceive past lives yeah. and oh, time in okay. general and yeah. and asking how he perceived time so we could have a next our next life let's not let's not call it our future life our next life could actually be 300 years in, in clock time or linear times past mm -hmm. so we could so my next my next incarnation for example could be in the medieval age because time doesn't exist we don't we, we think that oh our next life's going to be in the 22nd century or something it's not, it just depends upon what we want to experience and how we want to experience it so we can choose to be anywhere within event space on a in a particular location I mean, we, we don't we're not locked into the linear progression we can be anywhere and that's how you can travel in consciousness where you can pop into those alternate use and alternate things is because it is already happening in the process of it all mm. Mm. right all right so we've got a question from um ant cat's attic also known as catherine hello catherine we're happy you're here um could he repeat what he said about eureka springs arkansas is there a group or place we could visit i think eureka springs is is um is fairly similar to glastonbury but it's but the 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 local environment the the, the local energy is better i feel um <clears throat> It's not become so insular as 
as Glastonbury has. So people can just go there and, and experience the energies there. And I think you can go and get crystals and, you know, you can go and mine your own crystals there, which is, which is quite nice. Um, and you can go and sit, visit some of the shops and speak to some of the people there. And it's, it's quite a quite a good place to go to if you want to, if you want to spend some time there. Um, and there's a there's a couple of um, hotels very close by that you can so you can walk from the hotel into into town. It's very it's very very amenable place, and um, the, the houses are great. I mean, it's it's all it's almost like it's almost like England because <laughs> they're all small houses, <laughs> which is fantastic. And the, and the energy is brilliant. The energy is brilliant there. Are there other places in the U.S. you would recommend? Hmm. I think the national parks is what is what I would recommend in terms of going to places. Keep away from humanity, and there you will find high energy, definitely. That's just good advice in general. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering, you know, in in the process of you um, coming into your own and having these experiences, they told you to go away and be materialistic for a while. Basically, they said you know, go play in the earth plane and go be a human. And then you came back from that and you started to open up to moving back to meditation. And I think you just kind of went back to your natural Zen state. Um, and it's at this time that you started to really discover these different levels. And I think that I'm wondering if, is there a way that you can guide us through, because each one of these is like a mind popper, right? Like, I mean, each one of these, you think you found the, the information and then you discover something beyond it. And specifically, you know, one of this source beings showing up as a dragon to be like, oh, you're not, not ready for this level. So I'm wondering how, is your encounter with them visceral? What do you experience with them? And, and how does it change as you progress? That was a bunch of questions. I'm sorry, you hop in and I will stop loading things on um, top of you. I don't know how to explain it, to be honest. Um, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> well, basically, what I found is that there was a consensus, or a, <clears throat> certainly by by the, by the one entity, the dragon entity, which, which ended up being classified as Byron. It, took, it, it gave me a name I could use. Um, was that human beings, incarnate human beings, can't get to these levels whilst they're incarnate because it's such a low frequency, and 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 the the, 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 the sentience within the body is immersed in that incarnation. And so it's it relates to its local environments uh, totally. So for me to go there and basically say, "Come and talk to me," it was it was whoa, <laughs> you shouldn't be here. What are you, what are you doing here? And it and it's it was trying to sort of you know scare me away. But as, but as I as I sort of moved further upwards up the frequencies, and it was very difficult at first. By the way, it was really 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 difficult. Um, and I had to create different sort of ways of going further up with different frequencies, like going up trap doors in my loft and you know, going up ladders and you know, visualizing different ways to do it to try and make it work. And it, it changed every time because as I once got to one level, I found something else, and then I thought, "Oh, there's, there's another level there." Hmm. <laughs> and then eventually, I, I managed to push through. But as I pushed through, I ended up going up, up, up a bunch of levels, and I started to realise there was a structure there. Um, and so I, that allowed me to go back to different levels with with uh, repeatability and robustness, which is imp which is really important. And so when I was started to communicate with these different entities like like the almond source and and, and and origin, I started to realize that I could access these these different levels of of entity by going to certain levels because that 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 was the like the best transition point to meet them, so to speak. and And so I, I started to realize that and that, that also they they gave me information in a way that I would understand. There are times now, <laughs> even now, when I'm meditating and I'm sitting at the computer and I'm you know, typing up what, what, what's, what, what's coming into me, where I understand it, but I can't put it down into words. So then eventually I'm given a, a concept that I can work with and then, I, oh, okay, I can understand that, and, and, and down it goes. So, so, so I'm giving things in basically visualizations um or you know clair, clair audience 
and just press engines, just knowing this as well. So I get all all three of those different modalities of communication. And the it's it's interesting that the the, the more concepts I start to I understand, the more they can give me. And sometimes that certainly with the with the origin of the source, they uh, of course they've got humor as well. <laughs> we we didn't invent humor. And they sort of, you know, make fun of me sometimes because they're saying, "Haven't you got this yet? You should know this by now." <laughs> and so it's so it's quite a jovial communication at times. And, and I, I, I just, I, I, I decided that that's fine, but I need to ask questions like you're doing now. I need to ask lots of different questions to get to the depth of things. Yeah. And so it's so it's a little bit like Dolores's work where she asked questions through her medium which was the client in yeah. under hypnosis to be able to get access to the greater reality whereas i've got i don't need the, the client <laughs> the client in hypno in under hypnosis i can just go straight there but the the communication is based upon what i can work with and my specialism which was mechanical and electrical electronics engineering mm -hmm. and and the and the ability to be expansive is really important because without that you don't grow and, and in in taking on board the information it lifts your frequencies and so concepts that were difficult become easier and those that were out of your reach totally become visible and if you think about it <clears throat> all all of our shall i say great sages gurus leaders so to Jesus, the Buddha, et cetera, et cetera, they told things in a way that the average person could understand at the time. So things like the parables were basically stories to explain to the public or the disciples what Jesus, as, a, as an illumined um, uh, yogi, basically, could underst was understanding. And so they could understand it because they're, that was their that was their educational level you know they they didn't have the expansive information that we have now they didn't have the language we have now you know they, they, they didn't have the dictionary base that we have now so they had to be told in certain ways I had to understand it you know in, you know, in baby you know in, in, in baby food basically and so that's what's that's, that's how i work i'm i'm given information sometimes i don't understand it and then it, then a concept comes along and oh i can relate to that so I'm in in a in a certain way I'm sort of telling a parable because I'm I'm putting it into into a humanized way of understanding, mm -hmm. and hopefully it, the, the energy there will will permeate through the text to the person. And I've had lots of people say they've had downloads from the books and the information, and they've been buzzing, vibrating with energy because and, and all of a sudden they understand the concept. And so it's 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 not just about the, the information physically it's about the information energetically as well so yeah it's just a, it's a conversation and we have some fun doing it <laughs> we have some can't you get this moments <laughs> and it's 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 just interesting because i can just tap into them now and it's, it's really mm. really good well yeah <laughs> you're you're a translator and you're i mean you're you're a communicator you're a master communicator you're a translator you're a conduit where you you know bring this energy through and translate it and and I think that um, it's it's such a service because to be able to do that and make it accessible for people again, there's this through line of um, of the awakening that's going on. And I'm wondering, like, when you're in this communion state and you're hanging out with you know levels that we haven't been able to access because you know, like you've just got a different you've got a different purpose, you've got a different mission. So you know, the rest of us who like hit up to guides and astral selves and you know different things and you've like poop, popped out of that um what do you feel because people with ndes feel ecstatic they have you know these near-death experiences where they feel the oneness and all they know is love and you're in there interviewing them and i'm just wondering like when do you do you feel waves of love come through you do you feel anchored in love do you feel how loved you are like what is your relationship <clears throat> to that we feel all of that all of these all of these feelings and um, but there's there's a, there's a you have to bypass it so to speak mm -hmm. because otherwise you you stay there 
and you don't move and you don't move on. I mean, even there, there's a there was a a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, a chap called Roy Eugene Davis, who left his incarnation a few years ago now, and he wrote a book about you know, Yogananda, how I how I knew him, and he asked him a question and it was a really good question and he got a really good answer back and it explains you know everything really and he said how many people know god properly and he said only a few even out of all my devotees now only a few and and, and, and all the yogis in in india at the time you know because this was about 100 years ago and he, he said well, how many of those move beyond God? And he said, almost none. And that was an interesting question. And, that's, and he said, well, why, why is that? He said, because they get addicted to the connection, the bliss state. And they don't go beyond the bliss state. That is mind-blowing. And that explains it. So you have to go, to go there and then bypass it. <laughs> so that allows you to go further and then communicate with the with the with those entities in the in the higher levels and beyond beyond the source. Wow. So I'm like, who are you? Like, are you a Bodh- are you a Bodhisattva that just came back and incarnated? Like, what are you? <laughs> That's just amazing. I um I wasn't um, I'm, like everybody else. You're not allowed to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. so, because it would be a distraction um mm. it was in, of, of oh, i'm just trying to think how many years ago was it um there's one good quality individual in the college of psychic studies called val val gordon and she's one of the one of the one of the pure channels there and i've I really respect her. There's some others that aren't so aren't so good, but she's one of the good quality ones. And one year, we went we, rather than go to the college, we went to a, a house in in South Kensington, and she did some reading work for myself and and for my, my late wife Anne. And she said, "Do you want to know this information?" And I said, mm. "Do you want to have these faculties renewed?" I went, "Hmm." And it was like a test. It was like a test. And I said, no, we'll leave it as it is. And she said, good, because it would just confuse things. <laughs> and that was it. It was just, it was a case of, you know, you, you, you could go back to where you were, but it wouldn't allow you to do what you'll get, what you're doing now. Uh-huh. And because it would be a distraction, basically. And it, when when people um, have readings from me, and I, and, and I, I gave them the chance of asking, of, of having a, you know, some information about some of their past lives, and um, and I do give it to to them, <clears throat> but I always say I prefer not to because it's a distraction, because we start to live, you know, why did I do that? What made me do this? You know, mm. was I good at this? Or you know, how was I a king? You know, <laughs> these sorts of questions. And I said, well, now you're confused, aren't you? Because you're, you're basically living then where you should be focusing on the now. And, th- and so rather than knowing everything, it's best, to, it's best to, to know just enough to be able to do what you're doing in a focused way. Uh, and another, another interesting person as well who, who, who um, I met, I think it was around 2002. And again, another another high quality individual from the College of Psychic Studies. And again, it was another another home visit, can you believe? And she said that you've come back to see if you can do it just one more time. Mm-hmm. That was an interesting statement again. So I well, guess that I guess that knowing these different some of these different things mm-hmm. is nice, but it, it 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 could it could with you know in these low frequencies, it could become egotistical. And right. Just well, that's it. that's yeah. where I want to hop in because I think there's a there's a validity to that. I think that early on in the spiritual awakening, there's a thing of being like, well, who was I, you know? And there's this like this thing you you get involved in the in the you get enamored to the glamour and to the drama and like and it's like and it's a great way to pull you out of your now while you're you know kind of like 
understanding that you're it's like it's like the beginner course of understanding that you're multidimensional that you're mm. more than one being you know and then i think at a certain point past lives come in to be healed and they come in to be aligned and any fractals of ourselves that are experiencing that which is not unity that which is not you know source energy start to wave and say okay i need to align now let's heal this trauma mm. and i would have to have a suspicion that you had some experience with well maybe you haven't because maybe you've just popped in from narnia and you're you don't need that <laughs> but um what's your take on that um i i have been told by the people um by obviously people who are also connected um, of my heritage, it, it, it would be an ascended master if you wanted to, wanted to put a label on it, basically. Mm. Um, but I've, I also, I'm aware that I'm not from this particular multiversal environment. Uh, <laughs> it's such a great uh, way of saying that, which is which is a great way to get you into a psychiatric home. <laughs> so, so we have to. So another reason to stay, you know, keeping quiet, really, because otherwise you find yourself in a padded cell with a with a straight jacket on. I think that's really changing. I think that's really changing, and I and I think people will be fascinated to know. But anyway, yeah, I get I get it. I get it. Yeah. So 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 I, I do know that I'm I'm I'm, I'm from. A, a location outside of the energies that, that is our, our our source or our god. That's that's, that's one thing I do know. <laughs> I love your phraseology, Linda. Did you have something? I have a list. Oh lord! Oh lordy! <laughs> oh lordy! I'll try to stay on chat. So, I'll try so to be concise. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do like the the speed round here. How do you explain a thousand people being Cleopatra in a past life? <clears throat> yeah, how many how many people have said they were Jesus in a past life? Basically, we're all connected, and therefore, when we're back in the energetic, we all have the same information available to us. Thank you. And, and very quickly, we can also go to um, what people call the Hall of Records, which is actually a an area within the source associated with human existence human incarnations only there's there's a there's a, there's one for every form factor we can inc incarnate into and you can go into that in the energies and you can experience that incarnation and download it like downloading a or streaming a, a video or something you can so you can experience being cleopatra firsthand basically so <clears throat> that's what that's why people you know, say, oh, I was Cleopatra, or I was Jesus, or one of the disciples, is because they've, in effect, they've done that, um, but also the the information is available to everybody when, you, when you're in the energies, because it's all available, it's all part of us. How do you like that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How you explain those things so concisely is wonderful. So, with that, I have two biggies. He mentioned um, not scary beans, but um, less than, yeah. So my question that came in right before you said that, that popped in was, does evil exist? Only in the minds of men and, men and women. Basically, <clears throat> what we classify as being good or bad is a, a function of linearity. We, and there's a lot of questions surrounding this. For example, some people would say, well, why is a, an all benevolent God let me um, get mugged yesterday, for example? And, and, the, and the answer is, it gave us the opportunity and we accepted it because we wanted it to have individualized free will and experience everything from a, a free, you know, an individualized free will basis. So we, we know what we're going to get into when we experience it basically. It's, and it's and it's as simple as that. So, you know, we 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 know how the body's going to finish his incarnation. And we and we, you know, for instance, if we get lung cancer, you know, we know it's going to going to go that way. And we and we we actually say to ourselves, "Wow, I haven't experienced lung cancer before. Oh, wouldn't it be interesting?" <laughs> you know, and and so it's the the physicality doesn't matter in the slightest. It doesn't matter uh, matter whether we're, you know, we're male, female. Um, cross gender, what color scheme we've got, disabled in any sort of way, 
we don't care. We just want to incarnate because it's an evolutionary accelerant to have individualized free will here. It really doesn't matter. But <laughs> down here, we make a mess of it. <laughs> Love it again. <laughs> that was so well said. That was it so does. well said. Okay, my last question, then I'm turning it back to Kat. What lies beyond God? Well, the origin, basically. The where where God is, well, where the source is right now, along with the other source entities, is in a a group of uh, or a, a group of levels of structure that are within the first of twelve levels of structure. So. If you think of it, um, think of it like a sphere, and then there's 12 spheres within that sphere, and then there's a bigger sphere, and there's 12 spheres within that sphere. We're, it's in the first sphere, basically. It's like a, a ball of sentience within a bigger ball of sentience. That's it. That's the way to, that's the way to, to think of it. Like a... Another way to think of it is like uh, a goldfish in a very big fish goldfish bowl, and so and so the 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 water in the in the in the the goldfish bowl is basically part of the the structure of the of the origin, and it's 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 within that. So the structure itself, though, although its origin is actually what gave birth to the origin, so. The origin is the origin's a being because it's 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 sentience developed through, in effect, the Darwinian evolution of, of energies. You know, they attract each other and start to actively attract each other and then grow bigger and sacrifice their individuality to create a, a larger, more intelligent, and then conscious, and then capable, and then sentience um volume of sentience. But the source is within the origin and the origin is a volume of sentience that is within this what i call structured space which is which is which was created through an, an aberration in non-structured space or nothingness and the aberration was created through potential now yeah, that's in the book i'm writing right now so a bit of a teaser there for the for the readers <laughs> At one point, I'm just going to be honest, I just started hearing the Doctor Who theme. My brain was like, and we're <laughs> off, and because um, and, uh, it's like we're going down this tunnel of creation, and um, I'm just trying to navigate. So we're saying that origin is experiencing, oh dear, I think I may have lost it. Um, the origin experiences evolution as a function of the work that the source entities do and so what's making source what's making origin bigger are the source and ent entities the source and entities itself. are what and and it, say it again and itself it's doing its own work of course okay yeah. so the source entities are basically accelerating its own efforts to evolve and and at this and expand its sentience yeah and at the same time, Origin has no idea how big it is, which is what book two is about, where you're kind of going beyond that and tapping into mm. what we would consider concepts, but they're, they're concepts as, as entire realities, it seems like. And the, 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 the realities are a function of the event spaces that are there, but event space can only exist in structured space. So... <laughs> So it, it can't go beyond structured space unless it's associated with sentience. And so eventually, eventually, it'll be part of the origin as well. It's always, it, it is the origin anyway, um, but, it's, but it permeates the structure. And so there's, there's countless millions of different event spaces that are created through our choices. But eventually, it'll come back to one event space to allow the origin and it and everything else that's sentience to move out of structure space into substructure space or nothingness and try right. to populate that. It's, it's, yeah, it's the completion of the cycle. It's like the, it's the other, it's the antithesis of the big bang. And you know, when people think about it in that, there's kind of cos, cosmo, cosmo, cosmology, the cosmology, mm -hmm. the structural terms of it, like the uh, stars exploding out and then, coming back into nothingness. I mean, is, is am, am I 
Does that make sense? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It, only the, the Big Bang didn't happen. <laughs> that's what they attribute it to, right? That's like they're. It's like they're trying to understand what God is, right? Yeah. Well, if, if I just quickly explain, I mean, basically, the multiverse um, is a segmentation or a or a compartmentalization of the of the structure that the, um, the sentence that is the source entity uses to experience. Because okay. sentience associated with energy or and, and, and the structured energy allows the ability to experience something through through creation, but um, in terms of the the physical universe, it's created through the desire to create a low frequency environment as a because because the, the frequencies are, are are low, and so it was it was created sort of instantaneously, not not through a bang, but just created basically. And the the physical universe is unique because it's the only universe that's got 12 levels simply because it's the lowest of the frequencies. So it's a, if you think of it like in the old days when we had floppy disks, we might have had about seven or eight floppy disks to, to load a, a program onto your computer. Well, now you can get thousands and thousands of the same files on a single memory stick. So it's about what the finitude or the... Um, the capacity associated with the content within that finitude that can be that, that can be um, not only just manifest but also represented there. So the physical universe is the only universe that's got twelve levels, twelve frequency levels. So when we see galaxies through our our, our, our visual senses, and we have machines to see these galaxies which is also based upon our senses, by the way, and therefore limited, we don't see what's existing on the other frequencies within the physical universe. So if we went into the 12th frequency, for example, there isn't any gaps in between, in between the galaxies. The whole of the, the, of the volume of space is full because there's other aspects of mm. manifestation or an existence on all these different levels collectively. And so this is speaking to galaxies as consciousness, stars as consciousness, absolutely everything as consciousness. And humans are so slow on the uptake on that one, but that's really the expression is like all of these galactic formations are aspects, aspects of consciousness. And as the universe kind of folds in on itself, like that's also going up through the different levels and layers to discover origins. That's how I'm seeing it. Mm, very good. <laughs> <laughs> um well you're just you're like you you really narrate so well the the journey um jason do you have thoughts questions yeah i'm pro i feel like i am processing everything that you're saying and i'm like just yeah blah, 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 blah. that was the energy that you felt right how does the energy feel around you that you were feeling earlier let's start with that it's still there it's super strong and i, okay. I, I don't know how to explain it. it's like this it's like lightning it's the only way that i like this like you know it's like it flashes and and like i don't know but I, I I keep going back to, and I feel like I'm stuck on these numbers that you keep saying. So we have these twelve groups of twelve, and then you know, so there's 144. We're so I feel like I'm just so jumbled. Um, so these numbers repeat, right? So you have like the the lore of the 144 thousand. Right, like that number, that 144. Mm. And then these 12 groups, Jesus had 12 disciples, right? Like, I don't know what I want to say. 12 pairs of disciples. Yeah. Because because there wasn't just male disciples, there was female right. disciples. And, and, well, and, and that's so, what I was going to say. And you said, because you said that there's actually 13. And I was like, well, Mary, you know, I'm like, Mary would be the 13th. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we, we, unfortunately, um, the world at the time that Jesus was incarnate was very male orientated. <laughs> it is now basically, but it was male orientated to the point where any female wouldn't be written about basically. So they didn't write about the fact that, that, that the, that there were pairs of disciples, you know, so, and even down to the fact that there's, you know, most of them are married couples, for example. Mm -hmm. So, so you start to understand that what is history is is, is actually incorrect, and then you, and of course we all know that the Bible was written three hundred years after the event anyway. Right. So I mean, we can't remember what happened last week. So how are we going to 
how are we going to remember what happened 300 years ago in, in any you know in any accuracy so we start to so look going back to the numbers if we start to look at things from the function of 12 you start to see that's part of how the structure works through everything everything is based upon 12 and the, the logical divisions of 12. For example, 12, six, four, three, one. Mm -hmm. Oh, and two. <laughs> and it's all it's all to do with that. I mean, not that I'm into numerology or anything like that, but it's, it just it just mm -hmm. starts to work properly when you see it. And and, and everything increases by um, in terms of finitude, I found out that everything increases by a factor of 12 that means to the power of 12 so if we had the volume of a, of a universe being being x it would be x to the superscript 12 in terms of the next volume of associated with the with the next universe up Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the, the oh go ahead Linda if you guys I was something. just gonna say it's snarky I was just I always thought of Mary as the baker's dozen so she's the bonus thirteenth <laughs> <laughs> for those farmers out there you'll get it <laughs> and the bakers of course as well mm -hmm. and the bakers <laughs> the bakers what did I what did I say you said baker's, baker's dozen yeah baker's dozen and the bakers you're right. <laughs> So I'm going to take a swipe a side step here. Is there what, what is your understanding of the twelve? Is it twelve archangels that we have? Where what's your understanding of how the archangels are an expression of source energy? Um, there are entities who are in effect outside of the evolutionary cycle, but they support those that are in the evolutionary cycle, and they also so they support. So they're like guides and uh, and the helpers that us, that assist with the guides, and they 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 group together and they help they help us. We would classify them as our guardian angels if you want to call them that. <clears throat> but there's other levels of hierarchy, and those levels of hierarchy are based upon the roles that they have to play in terms of the maintenance of the evolutionary capacity and quality of the multiverse or that aspect of the the structure of the the source that's been compartmentalized to allow us to experience learn and evolve in mm -hmm. so these different level these different entities <clears throat> are of various various different levels of responsibility capability and as we evolve they evolve even though they're outside of the evolutionary cycle participating in the evolutionary cycle so they're i call them the curators basically and there's a book called The Curators that talks about the different roles and responsibilities of them. And so this, this is what they are. They're, they're, they're entities that are part of the perpetuation of the, of the ability to evolve by maintaining that environment that's been given to us to allow us to evolve through. Mm. Again, that's so, gosh, it's so neutral. It's, made, it's so accessible um, in terms of understanding these, this greater sphere. And that makes me wonder, what does origin think of Earth and this dimension, or is it aware of it? Well, I can let you know what, what source thinks right now. <laughs> but basically, I mean, the origin is... Too let's far. Get on with this. And, 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 I'm and sorry, so say it again. I interrupted you. Origin is what? So the, the, the origin just lets us get on with it. It's, it's so far ab above everything. It's not not really interested as long as the as long as it's evolution that it, you know it's it, it doesn't it doesn't matter and to some extent that's the same with the source the source through us saying to it you know we could do with individualized free will because everything else is collective will or various forms of collective will it's basically saying you know you wanted individualized free will i've compart I've, I've compartmentalized it so that you can get on with it and do it and not contaminate what's going on around but if you survive and you can and you and you and you, and you succeed then individualized free will, will will be shall we say allowed to be used in other locations within the physical universe and other frequencies within the physical universe so although you could argue there's a level of dismay <laughs> in what we're doing it's allowing us to see if we can stop making the same mistakes 
Now, we have made the same, we have made the same mistakes, clearly, because there's been a number of different civilizations that have grown in in population and capability over the time that we've been using the earth as a as a medium for evolutionary progression. And we've you know we've had the fall of Atlantis and the fall of other civilizations bef- before then. So we've been in states of various different levels of technological advancement, spiritual advancement, and energetic advancement in, in the past and blown it basically. With the with Atlantis, it was corrupt corruption. It was, it was corruption through um basically being addicted to various different levels of sensory stimulus responses um status you know all these different things power that, yeah huge power, power issues yeah and so that, that so there was a big big reboot and that's when mm-hmm. the egyptian um civilization just sprang into existence from nowhere and if you look at the egyptian civilization there is nothing that says it grew into being what it was it just ex- it just ex- appeared but Egy- egyptologists and archaeologists will will try and fight and say otherwise but they have no evidence to say that it didn't just appear because it did it just appeared from nowhere because that's what happened it was just recreated and there were individuals from the atlantean period who were there to help recreate the possibility of understanding various different ways of working with the land and working with the energies etc cetera, etc cetera. so there was a level of like a team of individuals who stayed behind to help can but i we, ask go ahead right now we're in a pickle <laughs> and mm-hmm. but but i, I think for what, I've, for what i've been picking up we're allowed we're being allowed to see if we can come out of the nosedive mm-hmm. and all the things that are happening in the earth right now we've had all we've had things like uh, war or, or conflict We've had things like um, disease with the COVID, and we've had other other things. Well, we have, we've had the the changes in the in the environment, you know, with the weather, basically. So we've had all of these things are designed to make us realise that we need to work together properly rather than work individually in a selfish way. So when we when we decide to work as a collective together in service to each other and in service to our environment we will become mature and again it won't matter where we come from what the color of the skin is what gender we are how we think as long as we are thinking in terms of what does my action do how does it affect other other individuals and when we can start to do that and become more mature then we'll start to come out the other side we'll start to enter into the start of the aquarian age that's so beautiful it's so well said there's a parallel and then I'll, I'll let Miss Linda hop in. There's a parallel with um, the star nations and saying, you know, stop shitting your diapers and destroying your environment. And then we will let you hang out, you know, as is part of a larger nation that you are the earth star humans, you know, that you are the earth star beings. And, but you've, you've got, <laughs> you've got about 800 years to like, you know, to catch up to our level, but you need to start doing it now. You know, so I think there's these parallels that you're that we're talking about. Um, I'll toss the mic to Linda. So um, when we talk about, because that's where where I keep coming back to, is that we're at this this moment again in time where we've been given many opportunities to choose our path of one way or the other, and when with each of us as an individual choosing that collaboration or competition which is it going to be um is there a is there a point like the hundredth monkey where we actually have a tipping point that shifts that well we're starting to collectively get there um we're never going to have this sort of cliff face self-realization it's always an individual sort of very gentle growth pattern, which can eventually become uh, more logarithmic or exponential in terms of the, in terms of our understanding. So with triangulation, as I'm told to call it, we, we will eventually affect each other and eventually we'll all start to collectively start to move up the frequencies and in, in doing so, we become more aware and awake. Um, and and it, it, is, it is going to happen, it is happening. I mean, it could have happened earlier 
I mean, basically, we could have, at the end of 2012, we could have been much higher up the frequencies. But with certain, with things ex not working the way we expected them to, i.e. the mass ascension, we were, because it was a misunderstanding, we ascended individually until we're all there. Yeah, it's like going up a mountain. Yeah, we can we we, we go up a mountain slowly. <laughs> we don't sort of go up a mountain that way, uh, and we and we go one behind each other generally. Although there's sometimes there's, there's two together, we we didn't understand that, and so there was a lot of people were dis, um, disappointed, in effect, or jumped off the um, the spiritual bandwagon totally and abandoned it and became the human being again. And I know a number of individuals who were very spiritual. But when they experienced the disappointment of not a, not having a you know, a mass world ascension because we didn't have this um, critical mass of individuals, mm -hmm. it wasn't going to happen that, that way anyway. Although it would it would have, it would have created an evolutionary accelerant in its own right, they just said, "Well, I've just I've, I've been hoodwinked. I've you know this has been a lie, all, you know," and they've they've moved away. And as a result of that. We've started to move down the frequencies again, which is why we've got lots of different nonsense happening all over the world. But if you look at it, there's a, there's a few things happening. There's something called the white children who are starting to be born on, on on the planet, and their role is to work in the background. Some of them will work in the background totally. Some of them will work in a qualitative way, and some will work in a quantitative way in terms of how they affect and influence people. And one of them is this uh, lady. Greta Thunberg, who's there to wake us up about our, looking after our environment. And there's others who are going to work in terms of how we how we should work together and govern ourselves and how we should work with technologies and how we should work with it, you know, in, 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 in general with each other. And, and so we will move back into being a higher frequency. It's just that we've we experienced a level of disbelief <laughs> and therefore well if this isn't right then i'm just going to be a, a selfish human being and enjoy the rest of my life and because because it's only one which, which is the wrong way because the, yeah we're yeah, beyond yeah. The human beings just a vehicle it's a motor car to us you know we it's a higher car you know we we we, we go and we go in it we use it abuse it and then and then come out again hopefully we, we love it and we make it the temple because i think that's part of the, you know the new awakening is that we start to do that um, but like that disillusionment, I feel like that's a key rite of passage in the spiritual awakening and where it's like that, that self that doesn't, except for people like you, maybe Eckhart Tolle, who are just like, I'm plugged in, I'm good. But like, there's, there's, you know, there's this thing of like going, ascending up and then having attachments. And then because we have attachments, we fall into this pattern, we crash down and then we ascend up. And there's this level of like learning how to trust who we are in, you know, what we call the ascension process and to stop using mommy, daddy, God, and start connecting with source as accountability, reliability, a greater understanding of self, you know, like there's this maturation process, but part of it that we, that I've definitely gone through is being like, all the, you know, like, like the whole thing to, to God, everybody, la, 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 like over and over as I learned how to like, gain control of my of my reaction and start to authentically surrender mm. it is it's being in the flow basically and knowing that you can only affect things if it's part of your your, your life plan i mean the life plans are a series of goals you know the individualized free will is how we achieve those goals but and again if we if we go against the flow we we miss the doors that are open you know, we get every there, time, every we, time we, we get there too early and the person with the key is not there. You know, we get there too late and the person with the key gone, gone through the door. But if you get there at the right time, we go through the doors and it's seamless. And I, I noticed this quite, you know, quite early on that if you use your, your intuition, you know, your gut feeling, if you want to call it that, and you go with that, then all doors are open. But if you tr if you get greedy, <laughs> for example, or impatient, then you can get there too early and you've missed it. You've missed the point. If you it, or if you if you're lethargic and you think, well, so what? Then again, you miss yeah. it. Because you've not been motivated enough. So we have to listen to our inner voice, which is basically the connection we have with our higher self and the guide and help us to 
help us navigate through this incarnation and to do so in the most effective way we have to go with the flow and understand when to make the move we're supposed to make the move when it's appropriate to make the move and to me that speaks of surrender and being able to play with that energy um and being able to to you know get it wrong but still be open and available to it i think linda has something to speak on this i th i think for me it's um when i hear ascension i always get this pulling down into the now is part of that ascension process like i see so many people just wanting to bypass and get to that place but ascension really is bringing those energies into the here and now for me that's my understanding ascension is a a process of maturity in effect it's it's us recognizing that we have to be responsible not just for ourselves but for everything and everyone around us and that that makes us a more responsible individual and in being responsible we become a model citizen if you want to call it that and therefore we can start to work in a higher frequency way where we where we you know we caring and sharing for example and that brings the ascension to us because we are ascending because we're starting to work in a way which is in effect high frequency and and, and thinking of the collect thinking of the the, you know, the the collective civilization rather than the individual civilization of one and that that means that we do ascend and so working in working in the process of of being more mature in what we're doing being more responsible in what we do creates the our evolutionary progression which creates the ascension process within us within it within it within a particular incarnation so continuing on that discussion for me there's a lot a lot a lot of spiritual people on the internet talking about individual sovereignty and really um I think that gets twisted in how it is used because it's, I think there's a, I'm responsible for my growth, my um, decision, my experience and reactions versus I'm not responsible for your well being at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where that shift is that they both can be true that I, I have some, responsibility for my brothers being my brother's keeper for being um, kind and generous and wanting everyone to have food and shelter and a healthy earth mm. and doing my part to see that happen and at the same time I'm responsible for my own crap mm. well we have to be responsible for our own crap the the, the, <laughs> the objective is not to not to make crap <laughs> right exactly yeah. yeah and 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 you know we have to be the the problem with with spiritual processes and ex and experiences is that it's never ending but people think that they've made it because they've experienced this or that or they feel or they work or they think in a certain way in a certain way and that's because the ego gets in the way he says oh i've made it now i don't need to do anything else <laughs> and they use words to justify where they are um they use very well chosen words <laughs> sovereignty is a superb word to use isn't it you know it's like saying i'm king or i'm queen yeah therefore i can do what, what i like because i'm i'm evolved which is complete nonsense of course <laughs> Some of the worst individuals on the planet are spiritual. <laughs> in terms of in terms of how they relate to other individuals, and they, they can be really selfish. And it's, and it's it's appalling to see. But if we could be spiritual and show through example how what spiritualism is in terms of you know caring for the environments, caring for ourselves, caring for our brothers and our sisters, and doing what we can do in a robust and repeatable way now that is being spiritual uh, and, and it's important to, it's also important to know you can't do everything yes and and, and and people some 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 people try to do 
lots of things and all they do is burn out and then they can't do anything else later because they've, yeah. they've burnt their fingers so the object the objective is to if you're being if, if you're being of service for, for for somebody or something or whatever recognize that you 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 have to create a um a tolerance of what you can do repeatedly and robustly whilst also being responsible for your own responsibilities as well because we have to be responsible for our responsibilities but trying to trying to create what you can do repeatedly is, is important well and with my collective when we talk about sovereignty and we talk about surrender it's like being sovereign means that you are responsible. Like you are responsible for the, the life that you're creating. You're responsible for the choices you're making. And you are sovereign because you are an extension of source. And so in that magnitude, you are sovereign in that you're always creating. You're always doing something. And that's where accountability comes in. And that's where surrender comes in because I want to create from the highest good. So I am sovereign in my surrender you know it's like they've, they've really shown me that like they're both delicious but you need them both because surrender without without sovereignty is oh what do you want me to do i'll, I'll do whatever you want and then you know sovereignty without surrender is like i'm the authority you do not you do not cross me hmm. and there's this beautiful you know synergy again yin yang masculine feminine well there's an old saying the lord helps those who help themselves it doesn't mean you can go into to walmart and and <laughs> a lot of groceries it means that you 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 help yourself to progress and as if you pro as you progress you get more encouragement because you get better connectivity and better experiences but on top of that i mean there's there's a there's, a, <clears throat> there's three things that we have to as, as, as spiritual individuals consider there's three powers if you want to call it that there's there's love wisdom and there's power and they have to be used in the right percentage. They have to be used in equality. You can't be more powerful and less spiritual and, 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 and with less wisdom. You can't have loads of love and, and, and no power. You have to, they have to be like, if it's 100%, you know, 33 and a third of each, basically. So, and they have to be used again, not just in equality, but with consideration. When's appropriate to lean into one versus the other? So love, power, and wisdom are the, because you were talking about triangulation earlier, and I wrote triangulation, and my experience is that three is the core upon which all else is constructed in the physical realm. And so it's like, it becomes a primary number, and there's like the Merkaba, um, the, uh, you know, tetrahedron comes from basing off of a three. And I'm wondering, you know, how that shows up in your explorations, that, that what's, what's the triangulation mean? Well, triangulation really is, about there's two forms of triangulation in terms of how we affect each other there's direct line triangulation which is me talking to let's say linda and affecting her energies by sharing information or by discussing things or by um teaching or receiving teaching so we're affecting each other and that raises the frequency of those two people as an example then there's the individuals that i would also interact with direct line as the individuals that linda would interact with in direct line and maybe one of those individuals is located in a different location and they would affect maybe they talk to to linda and maybe they talk to me so then you've got the triangulation between me linda and person x and the individuals that they communicate with so what you've got then is is, is, the, is the triangulation there's, there's three individuals connected through direct direct line triangulation but then you get the people in the middle who are affected as well so the people who are in between linda and me and linda and person x and person x and me and so you get the 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 the, the area of the triangle being affected so that's a sort of area-based um triangulation as well where we've got the the, the 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 people in the middle start to get affected as well and so you start that can happen quite quickly where everything is affected by because there's these all these people communicating with each other and, you, and all of a sudden bang they're they're higher frequency so then you got that little group of three but if these groups are happening all over the place you, they've got all these little little sort of areas of individuals be creating a higher frequency environment and higher frequency individuals you then start to get these these other triangulation effects 
affecting a bigger triangulation effect where it's all where it all becomes higher frequency it's like the molecules of the universe go ahead linda yeah yeah what you what you're describing is the grid that i keep seeing um, mm. of individuals that we are that there's a lot of people who are like i i have been guided i need to be at this location i have no idea why i'm supposed to be at this location but here i am mm. uh, that's how i came to be here mm. is that i knew this is where i had to be <clears throat> and i mm. think that that is the physical triangulation that's taking place and it's like the pegboards i think mm. of the little pegboards lighting up Mm. And and in doing, and it's not just about communication, um, and, and and influence that way. But it's about just being in a location and being a higher frequency individual and affecting the the environment energetically and frequentially, and the individuals within the environment energetically and frequentially as well. So you just by being somewhere, you can you can lift the frequencies. I mean, if if, if you might notice as as being high frequency individuals, all of you, if you go somewhere, <clears throat> do you start to see people laughing and smiling? Do you notice that? Whereas if you if you before you went in there, it's it's like <laughs> they're all poker faced. <laughs> so it's it's. This is what happens when people are a higher frequency. They start to enjoy themselves and be in joy because they become a higher frequency. They're no longer thinking low frequency thoughts and the subsequent um, behaviors and actions associated with, with those. They're, 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 they're becoming a higher frequency because you're there. You move away and it'll stay there for a bit until they, and then eventually it'll come down again unless they get exposed to somebody else who's a higher frequency. You can you can see things like this in a garden. You know, if you if you if you if you inherit a you know a garden with a house, for example, um, you you can see who's been there as to and how frequent how high frequency they were based on how the plants are flourishing or not, as the case may be. And then you might go there, and all of a sudden, if if the garden was a bit barren, you know, you start putting plants there, and they flourish because you're a higher frequency, and, and they they absorb the high frequency. They, they flourish. I just love how it's it's you just you're just proving how interconnected everything is, and um, I think we've all, probably all had experiences of walking into a, a room and feeling it change. I feel like this division. I feel people who are like because uh, they don't like the energy, and other people who are like, hey, you know, like I'll get compliments on my scarf, or there, you know, there's this desire to engage. I had somebody walk clear across the room um to tell me he likes my scarf and it is a magical special scarf but it's that sort of thing of like it when i'm in tune there there's an attraction and i think we've all found that i mean jason does readings for people psychic readings for people linda beams love through love bombs, out, love bombs. yeah <laughs> i love going down the street and sending your, love bombs and having people scarf. turn around going what was that <laughs> Yes, your scarf is like um, Tom Baker's Doctor Who. You the long. Seems there is a Doctor Who connection. <laughs> That's a second Doctor Who connection. All right. <laughs> Jason, did you have any questions, my, my friend? Uh, I feel like I'm processing. I do have questions. I'm still, pro like, it's fascinating. Yeah. I feel like I could just listen to you just talk about all this. Um, excuse me. So I do have questions. Um, specifically when you are, so we have these, we have these 12 frequencies, right? And so during your meditation or your exploration, you're, you're visualizing these different ways to move up into a different level. Um, are you physically seeing a landscape or what is the environment? What does the environment look like in say the first level versus the fourth level? Like how does that change? Um, these days i don't i just go to a, i just go to a location and in fact these days I, I know that everything is is everywhere is one so i don't need to go to a level it's like it, it all comes to me if that makes any sense um, but when i was moving up the frequencies and, and, and when i teach people to do it we, we i go back to the basics again clearly you have to and yes you do see landscapes you see um space scapes as well if you want to call it that or uh, and, and it's all different depending on which, which level you're onto. And sometimes there's nothingness because there's because it hasn't been used in a creative way yet. 
So it's you know it's it does change and the, and the feeling of it changes as well. Are there different colors associated with? So, sometimes, but they're interpretations because color is a, in effect it's a function of our frequencies here, isn't it? I mean, so when you move up the frequencies, color doesn't exist in the way we, we would understand it. So when I start to see certain things, sometimes it's translation <clears throat> because what I'm seeing there can't be uh, is, is, hasn't been experienced, so to speak, and therefore if it's similar. To something i've experienced then it, then, then that, that's that ends up being the translation so everything that i've experienced in this this incarnation is potentially a, a medium that can be used for translation right. not just not, not just verbal translation in terms of language but you know experiential translation as well but when there's nothing <laughs> that means basically means that there's, there's no reference i can use um sometimes things are crystal clear and it's not a translation because it's something I can cope with, so to speak. Uh, and but sometimes it's it's just like I'm there, and it's nothingness. But I but I can communicate with the entities that are there because I can feel that they're there. So yeah, so it's it's it, it's all of those things depending and depending on where, where I go to. The higher up the frequencies I go, the less constructed construct content is there that makes any sense um, because it's it's just not necessary any mm. follow-up jason i know it's like <laughs> it makes sense like I, it makes sense to me like like if if i don't have a reference point have then i i get that then it's like the nothingness because if if, if my brain can't imagine a, a memory or a feeling or a visualization so yeah it makes perfect sense yeah i'll give i'll give you an ex i'll give you an example and i i use this in the in the workshops i do if you've never seen a giraffe you won't see it however if you've if you've seen a dog a large dog then if you see a giraffe you, you may see a, the large dog instead because it's got a horizontal body it's got four legs it's got a tail, it's got a neck, it's got a snout, and it's got ears. <laughs> now, the giraffe has, has got little horns as well, and it's got a different coloured coat. But you'd start to see a dog instead of, instead of the giraffe because the dog is the thing that you're tra your translation medium. It's like, you know, it's like different, different words mean the same thing in different languages. You know, the dog is the, is the giraffe because that's what we can understand. It's only when somebody says to us, Actually, that's a giraffe because you know, X, Y, and Z. You think, oh right, and then it, you detach from the the dog as being the translation effect, and you see the giraffe because that's that's what it is. So it's it's we, we do translate a lot of things in terms of our earthly experience, but there are things that we can understand straight away because we've got the expansivity of being able to extend, understand, or see things that are outside of our normal experiential content that we've had in this particular incarnation. And you mentioned that you, you know, you came across um, the uh, dragon and Byron brought Byron, whatever the name was. Um, and, and it was at this point, it was a, Hey, you're not supposed to be here yet. Have you come across anything like unicorns? Uh, you know, like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, like as you're going up these levels. No, I think what 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 was happening was that um, the entity that was called Byron at the time looked into my memory, I suppose my my collective memory, uh, or or the human the, or the human memory, as I call it that, not not just mine, but in general, and manifested a form that it thought I would be frightened of. Gotcha. Which would be a black dragon, you know, of a particularly horrific looking thing it was. And it thought that would frighten me off. You would say, you know, you, you don't belong here. Um, this is what I look like. <gasps> yeah. It didn't didn't it didn't work. It's like the boggart from Harry Potter that takes on the image of what you fear the most. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But this was before this was before Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's the same sort of thing. But but it's it, it, 
and astral entities do that because we we tend to not look at things we don't like to see i mean how many people look away from snakes or or, or spiders or you know, or other bugs for instance they go oh, i don't like to see that whoa get it away from me get it away from me and that's what astral entities do they they rather than being spotted in terms of taking our energy from us we ignore them because we don't want to see them because they're giving us an image that is something we associate with being something we have to be frightened of so they so they so they do that so in doing that they make themselves invisible to us because we don't want to see this image so we don't see so we don't look that, look in that direction or we don't perceive in that direction so to speak so yeah the harry potter thing is a it's a, it's a pretty good example actually thank you for that <laughs> so i have uh going on that um trail of thought i have had personal experience where i've witnessed a ufo up close and was pointing it out to people and they couldn't see it mm. so i understand in the aspect of again that frame of reference of giraffe doesn't register what about everybody who wants to see one and hasn't um wanting something can create resistance because you're not you're not you're not letting yourself be not letting yourself be in the moment so you're trying to force something when you try to force something again you're not allowing the door to open at the right time <laughs> you know you're not there at the right time so they want to they want to see it but it, the 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 energy behind the want isn't allowing them to be in the right place at the right time so to speak and there's a, i mean there's, there's there's something else about this this not seeing things um i think it was the, uh, i forget Forgive me if I get this wrong, but there was um, back in the days of the of the of, of sailing boats. There was, I think, it was the Conquistadors or something. They went <laughs> to the, sort of the Polynesian Islands or something, and they didn't see them. You know, they they were there right. right in front of them, and they didn't see them arrive because they had no experience of seeing a, a square rigger boat. So the, the, there's that part of it as well. It's, it was totally outside of their experience, so it didn't exist. Yeah, couldn't possibly exist because it wasn't it. So it was invisible to them. So there's, a, there's an element of that as well. But in terms of people who want to see something, that, that creates a, you know, a resistance in its own right. I had an experience. Oh, go ahead. You go. So it's a bit like trying too hard in meditation. You know, if you try too hard, it, it, again, it creates a level of resistance. You have to just sort of, you know, turn the brain off basically <laughs> and things start to happen oh that's a good way of saying meditation um just to distract yourself from your regular thoughts and just go go into a different place do you teach meditation i, I teach um how to project the consciousness into the various different levels of the multiverse oh. environment. Yeah. i teach that okay. and it's been very successful okay i'm like okay bucket list it just landed on my bucket list um <laughs> things to go do um so oh i lost my question here with um there's a series of correspondence courses which i do by the way yeah, which you, can, about it. you can download off the internet um, and you can it teaches there's audio to it and there's a, there's a pdf file and it, and it basically it's like being in a lesson and it just t takes you through the what would be a, a physical lesson if you were with me basically so it's that's that's there so so you don't have to be in a workshop with me you can do those correspondence courses and your one-on-ones are you're you're really accessible um uh like it's like an hour for 95p 95 quid is that right like yeah, that's right yeah yeah and it's it's it is it's a, a reasonable fee as well it's, it's really <laughs> reasonable when i look at some of the prices around the world uh i i think wow <laughs> you know it's yeah it, 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 there has to be an exchange because otherwise it doesn't have value for people and, and worth exactly um, and, and so but it also has to be accessible as well and therefore people who need these can you know can can in fact afford it um but just giving it away i do that for people who absolutely need it but really can't afford it but with some individuals, they abuse that basically, or or they don't give it the value it's, it's easy. So obviously, it's free, it's not can't be worth anything. There's some some countries, um, for instance, like Hong Kong or China, 
where if it's not expensive, it can't be, it can't be worth having or doing, which is bizarre. You know, you think what? And then you got the other side, which is India, where you have to make it affordable for them, and therefore you have to really put the, the you know the, the course fees or the or the the reading or healing fees right down so they can they can afford it because they they do it they 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 want to do it and they and they respect it. So there's two different you know thought processes there and all the bits in the middle as well that's really thoughtful and compassionate to have that set up like that um we've got 15 minutes left with you and i'm already going to uh invite you back for a part two because there's a question i can't remember that i know is really important so i don't know if you if you'd be willing to come back for a part two at some point yeah sure we'll, we'll work it out i'll We'll look at the diary between us. Myself right. You mean Celia will figure it out. Um, I wanted to ask you about Egypt um, because um, I know this is going to sidestep. <laughs> this is a big sidestep, but I wrote it down and I want to talk about it. So you said Egypt disappeared after um, Atlantis crashed. What is your understanding of what happened and how did you perceive it? It was sort of a knowingness, really. And then as I questioned, um, the entities, you know, the source entity I was, I was, I was talking to, um, obviously, obviously our source entity, um, <clears throat> it became apparent that, in effect, the corruption of Atlantis was too far, gone too far, down to the point where um, they were even affecting their own genome to, you know, add on animals heads or bodies or the color of their skin you know that, that sort of stuff so you start to see some of this in some of the hindu texts and and even in thailand where you get we get you know half human half animal or, or bits of animal and humans those sorts of things so there's there's still sort of there in the mythology um and mm. and and the gods you know were, were blue skinned and basically these were individuals who of status who showed their status through affecting their own their own their own genome and just to show it look I, I can afford to do this which is you know can imagine it being very expensive and and so the level of corruption and, and it, it was all there's lots of you know um sex-based corruption as well and, and, and everything else it became too difficult to reverse it and and as a result of that they were affecting the energies because they were also very good at using energy they they had a, a, they were able to harvest energy um, using various different sacred geometry and, and and the ratios surrounding those geometries, hence the pyramids. Yeah, and so and, and so they they the, the corruption of what they were doing from an energetic perspective was serious. So it, it couldn't be allowed to go any further. So they they just it, source and the other entities that are sort of helping to govern the opportunity for being individualized and have full free will here decided it was best to start again but not from the very very beginning but from a point in which there would be a civilization that's had the capability of understanding through education where um how to how to exist and how to work with the energies and that's so so therefore some of the some of the priests were, were taught um how to work with energies and manipulate energies as well and that and that just came into existence i mean basically it's it was like one moment you got the whole of it of the, the atlantic civilization and then all of a sudden it was it's focused on on egypt and other locations around the earth because yeah. a lot of the a lot of different form factors and body types we've got um like the afro-caribbean the american indian the, the this the mongolian chinese etc etc the asians is 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 basically some of it is the the human body surviving through different frequential changes or drops in frequency and some of it is the re is the the planting of that particular that particular humanoid body type from different locations in the physical universe because it was already at a frequency that could work on a, on one of the lower frequencies that we dropped to so that's why we've got the plethora of different you know, human body types as well it's interesting because i i will pick into what i've seen with um the planet that exploded and people coming here from there the creation of atlantis atlantis exploding then like egypt egypt being born like there's this there's this pattern that keeps repeating 
of regenesis, but it's been done in a very destructive way. Mm. And like I, I parallel this whole thing with the Anunnaki and Atlantis and the arrogance that there was going on where they were like, we're just going to be like the gods. We're going to be just like the gods. Like that's the vibe I get from them. And they, they create their own implosion because of the arrogance. And then, and then Egypt is like a rebirth. And, but like you said, we've done this over and over in our civilization to the point where we are now, where there's still the arrogance. There's things like CRISPR out there where people are altering their genes. You can now change the color of your hair if you want to. You can do it. You can like these patterns keep repeating. And um, yeah, I just want to know what you, what you see for our, what do you see us evolving to? What's, what's, have you been able to get a glimpse of our future? <clears throat> we, well, you can see we're starting to think in the right way anyway, because we are starting to work together to collectively um, save the planet and um, you know, re, you know, replanting trees, for example, or making places national parks or um, um, changing the way in which we use fossil fuels, for example. All of these different things are starting to happen. So it's so we've sort of we've sort of almost leveled out. And if you can see the way in which we've dealt with the Ukrainian and Russian um, issue, that could have been a World War Three. It, it really could. It could have escalated really quickly. But the maturity is there that says, OK, how can we confine this and overcome it? And unfortunately, you know, the individuals in power in Russia haven't or don't want to basically communicate and 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 come into a, 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 a discussion a discussion based forum where they can understand that <laughs> trying to retake land that was that was in, that was you know individualized is is the, is the right way forwards so the only way to deal with it is to supply rather rather than actively be part of the machines that are allowing them to overcome the the, the armed forces in russia so by supplying weapons for example is the, the the blunt end of what could what could have been a very sharp sword, but it's allowing the the Ukrainians to to deal with their conflict and hopefully overcome without spreading without it becoming you know spread out and becoming a, becoming a world war. So there's so that it's it's almost like creating a firewall. You know you know if you, if you have a forest fire, you 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 create a fire, to stop the fire progressing. And that's sort of what's going on in Ukraine. So it's that, that and that is a a mature way of dealing with it when you're de you're dealing with somebody who's a complete nutcase. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that there's a. Um, I mean, again, I see this thing of sovereignty and surrender. And what does it look like to honor boundaries? What's it look mm. like to honor border borders? And what's it also look like to hold your ground when you're being you know oppressed by? Mm. Uh, external forces like there's there's you know there's this pattern of being like, oppressed by external forces that i think that we are acting out um on each other where we have got to stop being divided and and own where that greater oppression is is coming from and it's because it's it's a construct it's not real um but i we only got eight minutes with you left and so i was wondering if you'd tell us about because you said that you don't do psycho psychological therapy or you don't do yeah psych psycho counseling or anything like that but you have psycho spiritual healing and other techniques for dysfunctions created by who we are and how we incarnate so that's that is i'm, I'm laughing because it's like it's it's just again it's like so specific tell us what that book is about and what people can experience from that book well <clears throat> I'll make a point of saying it's not a, a textbook for, <laughs> for learning how to heal. I would always suggest that you find a good teacher, you know, a robust teacher of, of experience and longevity. But really, it's explaining my own um, techniques that I've been taught by my teacher, Helen, who was a first generation student, uh, or was taught directly by Barbara Brennan. So there's an element of that in there as well. There's also an element of the different things I've discovered through being a healer um, and helping people. So there's new techniques in there that I've been given to allow me to basically customize healing for each individual I, I'm asked to, to work with in the healing capacity. So there's not just things like you know, spine cleansing, for example, or, um, or healing the, 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 the auric layers or, you know, changing the 
uh, the way people think, behave, and act through psycho-spiritual reprogramming. It's it's about it's about understanding sort of everything about about who we are because most of the physical issues that we have are based upon psycho-spiritual dysfunctions, which are if you want to call it that, bad psychology. <laughs> you know, we 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 have things that affect us in our lives that we may have brought into from this from a previous incarnation. We have trigger points that that bring it into you know into manifestation. For example, we might have a fear of snakes. Again, we used snakes before. And that may be because in a previous life you died from a snake bite. And therefore you got natural fear of snakes because that's what made you leave that incarnation. And so the links between that individual in this incarnation and that individual in that incarnation are still there. And so there's a phobia created or or, or a, an incorrect energy associated with being in, in, in the same space as you know, a snake. So it's it's a it's it's really looking at not just energy healing, repairing the aura, repairing the energy templates associated with the constructs of the human body, repairing the chakras, um and and, and the things that you know, removing astral entities is not just about that. It's about understanding removing links, um removing the or changing the um energetic location of the soul if you have two har lines crossing together so you start to experience somebody else's incarnation <laughs> at the same time which you know or and also <clears throat> some people are, are naturally higher frequency and therefore can see different entities at the higher frequency that, that, that we are now so it's about understanding that as well about understanding things like you know why do we get depression um, why um do some people have bipolar? What is bipolarism? What is you know? Why do people get Alzheimer's or or, or dementia? You know, what's happening there? You know, can you heal this, for example? So there are lots, there's lots of things there as well. So it's it's a it is a sort of a textbook, but I make a point a lot about you know making sure that you got a good good quality teacher to to, to help you progress. Uh, and and so it's it's basically it's at the point in time it was written. It was my my toolbox of, of healing techniques. Hmm. That's so beautiful. I think that's so important. I feel like that's a, I it's it's a book. I feel like I'd want to have on my shelf just to be able to if somebody if I encountered somebody that was going through something with bipolar, I'd be able hmm. to pull it and look at it. And then as somebody who does energy attunements with people, I would be able to use that as a reference point for hmm. being able to support them. I mean, that's so beautiful. Um, and, and we- we're actually doing a work. We, we do a workshop with my um, with my Chinese agent, where we're teaching people to do the subjects within the book, um, and it's it's so it's and it's available worldwide. Basically, you, you just tune in. Some t- unfortunately for some people, it's midnight <laughs> or even middle of the night, um, but they, you can a lot of it. You can get the the recordings for the video recordings, and they can learn themselves and we have questions and answer sessions as well uh, sort of once a week where they, they can d- dial in and we they can ask questions about healing or they can ask questions about the thought processes or or what they've experienced in t- in healing one of their their clients which could be a family member it, when, when they're you know when they're still in their students and, um, and then at the end of the the year they can they can take one year or two years to do it they can basically come to a physical workshop where they get taught the high, the the more complicated stuff, which is to do with again changing thought processes, you know, psycho spiritual reprogramming, which isn't isn't psychology. It's actually going into the energies associated with our personality and turning certain switches on and off, and and teaching them how to do that and how to recognize certain things. And, and how to move around them and how to take maybe it takes time to change somebody's thought process if, if it's a if it's a chronic um d- belief function that they're or system that they're using so it's mm-hmm. yeah so it's there it's there it's it's available and um we That's start incredible. we start we start a new cohort every year and, it, and we've and it's uh once really your uh, next one start it's actually started this year oh so, fucker. but there are um there are um, different start points where you can start oh, okay. and, and and move through yes so it's also recognized by the 
by the uh, Complementary Medical Association, which is the governing body for all sorts of holistic healing modalities uh, within the UK, of which I'm of, obviously I'm a fellow of. But the the college we've created is called the Aquarian Age, and this particular healing notes modality and the school is 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 recognised by the CMA, the Complementary Medical Association. So it's got um, a lot of credibility there. So um, much further ahead than the United States in this. Well, it makes me think of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. Like this is really parallel where you go into the zero point energy field, you recollect your original template and the things that aren't in alignment in terms of your personality distortions rec rectify themselves, which then rectify the body's relationship to the programs it's been holding. Mm -hmm. There's this whole, I mean, there's so many beautiful, rich parallels that this work is happening and you're one of the people who are her heralding it. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you repair an energy template, <clears throat> or for instance, the energy templates associated with a, um, uh, a, a an organ, let's, let's say the heart, then the physical aspect has to start following what the energetics are. So the old energy template would be the heart with heart damage or, or heart failure, for example. You remove those and you, you substitute them with new a new energy template, which is like having a new heart. And the physical heart has to then follow, has to then start to become like the energy templates it's so beautiful well we, we are at the top of the hour and so um is are you okay to hang out a couple more minutes just for us to close up everyone are all y'all okay to hang out for just okay i am um <laughs> so good good i just want to check on people's boundaries so um mr guy stephen needler um, I feel like I should call you professor. <laughs> this is something just, with a just guy's good enough. <laughs> a tip of the hat. A tip of the hat. Um, that's the Irish in me coming up. Uh, but uh, so I just want to say thank you so much for being here. What what a pleasure to surf the uh, the galaxy, the multiverse with you. Uh, we're surfing the multiverse here with Guy, uh, Master Surfer, and. Uh, what is from your heart to ours? What is your final message to um, our our people and and how? Yeah, just just that. What's your what's your heart say to ours? <clears throat> Be responsible for your thoughts, behaviors, and actions, and how they affect not only you but those around you, and also your environment. And think about making your environment the utopia it could be, and how we can work together in service for each other and how that, that would also augment the possibility of being in utopia. And if we all did it together, we'd achieve it in this particular lifetime. Oh, that's beautiful. I think that's all of our dreams. Um, I'm thinking about Linda and her geodesic, geodesic home she's going to own one of these days out in, in the desert. Um, with that, I will thank you, Guy. I will toss it to Miss Linda. And what is your... Gratitudes for today, Miss Linda. Well, there as are. always, all of our viewers <laughs> and Guy and Jason and you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, you add so much to the conversation. Even if you don't say anything, your presence is known and felt. Thank you. So please um, continue to grow our community. Hit that like button if you haven't done it. Subscribe if you haven't done it. Share this conversation. Um, get this information out there in whatever way you, you want. Um, make sure you check the information below on how to get in touch with Guy, Kat, myself, Jason, um, and his amazing paintings. Um, which you don't even know about, Guy, but yes. Well, I wonder who, um, who the artist was. Very good. Yes. So um, thank you for all of those wonderful things. Um, and thank you for the copies, the contributions. We'll continue the conversation in Facebook. And uh, with that, Kat, what's happening next week? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Um, so next week, it's actually going to be group readings for the audience. And Christopher Hancock is going to be back to do group readings with us. 
Now, don't tell him I told you, but I'm wanting to see if we can get him on as a co-host or semi-regular co-host. Don't say anything. Don't reach out to him. Don't tag him in any conversations on social media saying how much you'd love to see him being a co-host on Third Eye Salon. We don't want to pressure him like that, but if you did, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, there's going to be the four of us doing psychic readings for you and, and our, our wonderful people. Um, so tune in for that. Um, it's always a blast. We have a great time. It's a huge loving vibration that happens and it's just, it's a party. So please do join us. Um, and with that, um, thank you again, Guy. What a tremendous gift. There will be a part two. He said it. It's been documented. He's going to yes. do a part two with us. Oh, it's awesome. So with that, we love you so much. Be so kind to yourself. Be kind to the world. And we'll see you next week on Third Eye Salon. Bye, everyone. Bye.